Hi to everyone, my name is Matthias, I'm the technical support engineer for Trimbus eCognition software and this is another eCognition deconstructed video. Today we're going to again look at pixel based object resizing. This is the second video, so if you haven't watched the first one, please go ahead and do so and then return to this video. As you remember, the pixel based object resizing can be used to reshape your objects and actually the candidate surface tension is a special setting that you can use to grow and shrink your objects. And what does surface tension mean? So I'm going to read this from the reference book. The surface tension uses the relative area of classified object region feature of pixels of a given class to optimize the image object shape while resizing within a cube of given size around the current candidate pixel. The ratio of relative area of seed pixels to all pixels inside the box is calculated. So I admit that this sounds complicated and actually it also is a bit complicated but after this video I think you're gonna understand what it's doing and then you can go ahead and use it and it's gonna help you out a lot. So these are the settings here on this list uh, that you can use for candidate surface tension. The reference operation value box size in X and Y and box size in Z. And let's go from top to bottom. Reference is either object or class and I try to illustrate this on this figure on the right hand side. If you choose object as reference then the pixels of current image object are considered for relative area measurement and if you choose class pixels of a given class are considered for relative area measurement. So if two objects of the same class fall within your bounding box, your box size um, and you choose class both are considered in the relative area measurement and if you choose object only the object, the current active object is considered and not the neighboring that might overlap uh, your bounding box. Okay. You can choose these different operations that are listed here, then a value between 0 and 1 for the relative area measurement which equals to 0% and 100%. Then you can define the box size in X and Y. So 5 times 5, five for example, so if you filter of 5 times 5 pixels, uh, so 25 pixels, or 20 times 20, 400 times 400, whatever you want. And the last one is the set direction of your box, but we're not going to touch this in this video. Let's have a look at an example. So if you choose growing and set the surface tension to smaller or equal than 0.5, and a box size of 5, so we have 25 pixels. What you see here is in grey, that's an object a classification and we have this box in blue highlighted the active pixel. Now this box runs over your whole image like a moving window and calculates for each active pixel the percentage of pixels that are belonging to that class within that bounding box. And then it evaluates if it's true or false and if it's true it executes the growing or shrinking or whatever you defined and if it's false it just moves on and let's have a look at this first frame here in this case in this moving window in this bounding box we have 9 out of 25 and i believe now our condition is true so this is less than 0.5 percent so 50 percent of 25 pixels right Therefore, it's gonna grow. And then it moves on to the next pixel. Let's also discuss this briefly because this one is false. So the area of or number of pixels within the bounding box that are classified is larger than 50% and not smaller, so it's false. And then it just keeps on moving, it doesn't grow, it goes to the next pixel. And this is done for the whole image. And let's, let's just look at this uh, animation and see what would be the final result of this whole image object after we applied this algorithm. Here we are already, so all these bright grey pixel objects would be added to that object, applying this algorithm and these settings, and the object would look like this. Running the algorithm a second time, the object would grow again and all these bright pixel objects would be added afterwards. Let's have a look after this theory part at a bit more meaningful settings like growing larger or equal to 0.5 and this setting is actually very helpful to 
improved shape of your objects and you're gonna see why after this animation. So it's gonna do exactly the same than before. Simply the condition is different, it's larger or equal to 0.5 and it runs over the whole object or your whole image and evaluates each pixel. And each time it's true it's gonna add the pixels adjacent to the active pixel, the blue one. After one execution your object would look like this, so these would be added and would look like this. And just to compare it, the red outline was before the execution. If you execute it a second time, the object would look like this. Here you see the ev evolution of the object, so it's growing actually. Using these settings, the side effect, the very nice side effect, is that you're closing these narrow gaps that you have. So the object is becoming more compact when setting growing to larger than 0.5. Now we're going to have a look at shrinking and we're going to do the opposite. We're going to set it to smaller or equal to 0.5. This follows also exactly the same procedure as before, but instead of growing and adding pixels, it's shrinking, so it's removing pixels indicated in yellow here. So each time it's true, it's going to remove that pixel. And a side effect of this one is that you're going to remove these small arms reaching out of your objects, so it's becoming more compact. So we're not closing these gaps, we're removing these tiny little arms that are reaching out of your object. And in combination afterwards, if you use it in combination, we're going to do this in evaluation in a second, uh, you actually can create a very nice compact objects and improve the outlines of your objects. All right, let's go to Ecognition and apply these algorithms. But first we're gonna set up a project. I loaded a Sentinel-2 image here with agricultural areas. To create the objects, I calculate the NDVI and did the segmentation and also copied it to a second map. So we're gonna apply our algorithms on map two and we're gonna keep the main map for comparison reasons. And after the segmentation, it's gonna look like this. So the goal is to get nice irrigation circles. So each circle should be a single object and should have a nice circular outline. But after this segmentation that I did, these objects are still connected. So let's think about an approach how to split them up. And actually based on what you've learned in the previous video, uh, you can do this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a combination of shrinking and growing to actually split these objects into single objects. So first we shrink them so they are disconnected and then grow them back into their original size. I already prepared a short section here within the rule set which is actually exactly doing this, so it's called the shrink and grow strategy, so we shrink and grow and this will separate our agricultural parcel classification. Let's execute this one. Now on top we have map 2, so we're working map 2 and on bottom you see the main map where we have our initial segmentation and classification for comparison. So you notice uh, we split these objects up and now we have nice uh, single irrigation circles on top. You also see the number of agricultural parcels on the bottom is 600 and on top we have more than 900 so we increase the number of these circles. Okay now let's have a look at the surface tension stuff that I was talking about previously. So let's append it in process, look for pixel based object resizing. We are interested in reshaping our green class, so the agricultural parcel class. And we have to set map to map 2 because we have two maps and we are working on map 2 now. Let's scroll down here in the algorithm parameters to the candidate surface tension. As reference we're going to use object, you also could use class but we're going to use object and we're going to set exactly the same settings as we had in the demonstration before, so 0 0.5, and it's set to growing. Okay. 
let's um, execute this one. So it did it once. And you actually, you might have noticed that something changed. So let's zoom into a special case. Here you see that already it grew into this unclassified area based on the surface tension settings. Let's increase the number of loops of cycles to 30 and execute this one so it does it 30 times in a row. And you're gonna see that these areas are gonna vanish compared to the initial segmentation. So we filled these gaps based on this growing and the surface tension settings. Let's simply copy and paste this algorithm. I'm just gonna look for a nice area. Here we're gonna see something changing when we use the shrinking approach and the surface tension settings that I showed previously. So let's just copy and paste this with Control C and Control B and change growing to shrinking. And we're gonna put this new class into removed. So you're gonna see what's happening. And we set the operation to smaller equal to 0 0.5 and keep the number of cycles to 30 and just execute this. And you're gonna notice that these outreaching arms, these small features gonna disappear. So I uh, put them into this yellow class and they are removed from your classification. Again, on bottom you see the initial segmentation and on top the refined one. It's not perfect yet, but uh, it's just for you to get the idea. So we split up the objects and then refined them and smoothened the outline. And I think it looks already more realistic, right? It always depends on uh, what you want to achieve, but that was our initial goal to get single objects and smooth the outline. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Um, I think, well, I believe this is uh, fairly complicated, but just go ahead and try, try it yourself. Use different settings, different box sizes, and just play around with it and notice the differences. And uh, Please, if you have comments or questions, post them underneath the video and have a good day.